All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the original Drink Draw Social Club. Tonight, we are paying tribute to one of the all-time greats, J.P. Leone. Our cast is, yeah, is, we have Tommy Lee Edwards. Hi, Tommy. Hi, everybody. Hey, Tommy. We have Dan Panoshin. Hi, the Reverend folks. Dave Johnson. And myself, um, unreverend Jeff Johnson. Oh, I'll disappoint him. Yeah. yeah. The only one without a beard. Uh, yeah, well, you could grow one if you wanted to. You could try. I you bet. Be, yeah. Probably be whiter you're like, than you're like, Hey, Dan, you're like Frank Beard of uh, ZZ Top. The only guy <laughs> yeah. who didn't have a beard. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming on board, Tommy. Um, yeah. Um, obviously, obviously uh, great great friends with uh, John and um, so much so that uh, you helped put together a very special book right now that's, uh, we put the link in it below. So if people are watching this video below, there's a link where you can, um, we're gonna showcase a whole bunch of artwork. Oh, but cool. if you wanna see amazing artwork that looks just like it is in, you know, in real life, like literally looking at the real pages and seeing some of the yellow and seeing the, uh, you know, the lettering everything on them right mm -hmm. i mean you can oh, probably describe it better than i can oh yeah yeah that that yeah the the winter men special edition artist edition uh book uh bernard chang and scott dunbeer and i and and jp's wife christina and a few of us have been putting that book together for a while now and um it's funny actually uh shortly after jp passed i think uh, actually, Dave had posted something about, oh, wouldn't it be great to get an artist edition of something, you know, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the perfect candidate because, one, he owns it um, with the writer, and um, and he has all the art. So all of the art um, is at his studio in Miami, and oh. um, well, that's a commission he did for a buddy of mine in Australia. Yeah. it's cool like you know it's funny it's like some of jp's best pieces are these commissions that he would do yeah um, you know and it was a i think a chance for him to just kind of focus on one piece for a while that's another commission I think. right oh is it? i thought that might have been from uh earth x yeah no i think that's a commission wow no that's earth yeah. x. no what? i mean i think tommy would know it's a it's a commission yeah um, what's it's amazing, amazing. <laughs> is um, seeing, seeing an artist's edition sometimes, you know, if an artist is super clean, meaning um, doesn't use That's a lot of whiteout, doesn't like, make a lot of corrections, That's um, right. it, it's almost like seeing the originals, you know, like a printed Xerox. But when you take a look at someone like uh, John Paul Leone's originals, he'll go back in with white paint, he'll, he'll scratch it. It's almost like Jorge Safino in a way where you get to really see the nitty gritty, I guess, uh, of the artwork. And that's kind of a, a special, unique thing that unless you're at a comic book convention at an, uh, like an art dealer stand, you really will never see artwork like that because it's all cleaned up and scanned and, and in most cases colored. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially lots of stuff, like even this stuff that you're showing is stuff that has been scanned in grayscale so that you right. can see a little bit of the imperfections and the, you know, really see like, you know, the variations in the ink. Um, you know, you can might, might see a little bit of the underdrawing in there, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. And JP started scanning his stuff in grayscale, you know, later on, um, as we started to be able to have more control over, you know, delivering the stuff ourselves, you know, rather than sending it off, you know, racing to FedEx, you know, and then they scan it bitmap, you know, and, mm -hmm. Or, you know, and then before that, then obviously they'd photograph it and stuff and everything was either black or white. But nowadays, I mean, um, I remember trying to convince him to scan it in grayscale because and then just play with the levels later because you could. Um, and then when, when we'd color it, just color it and like put the line in a multiple layer or something like that. Yeah. Um, in Photoshop. Uh -huh. Yeah. And my wife colored um, that EarthX stuff. And she also colored some of Win did Winterman or not? Yeah, Winterman. Um, she colored the last bit of it. Dave Stewart colored most of the episodes, and then she colored the last kind of the big special episode, which was the, the last issue 
you know, with the winter special. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Beautiful colors. Yeah. I mean, that was a spectacular book. That was, that was what, um, I mean, I guess I was probably familiar with John's work, but um, the story by Brett and the uh, story by John combined, it was like nothing I had ever really seen before. I mean, and it's, 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 it's definitely a read. It's not like something you can skim through. It's a book you have to read. And yeah. It, it made me a fan of, of both guys. And, um, you know, it was just a unique book. I don't, I don't think you'll find yeah. something like that again. No. It was that, that um, John was, I mean, JP was very perfectly cast for that because it's real world stuff. Um, you know, so, so a lot of research, um, you know, no fakery. Uh, a lot of, you know, if it was a, a car or a gun or a uniform or, you know, anything it was, it was, he had researched the living heck out of it. Um, and actually when Bernard and I, stuff, hmm? I was just going to say that his research was phenomenal. I was just going to show one of this one, which is one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird right? because I heard now this is just rumor, Tommy. And I don't know if this is true. I heard he actually put down his own money to get like a space shuttle to like break through a building. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not cheap. That's expensive. Yeah. His, so. his believability, even when drawing something so outrageous as that was uh yeah. bar none. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah he it, did the, it had a validity. Yeah. He did the opposite of what I did with red sun. He actually like really researched and made it act. <laughs> I just kind of made up after it. Right. right. So. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. are you thinking about Tommy? Uh, Allen, 12 year. Nice. Right out of the bottle. Perfect. No glass. <laughs> out of a glass. All right. Um, I'm drinking something pretty classy, um, but light. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, the, uh, when Bernard and I went to Miami, um, uh, a while back, Bernard Chang and I to get the, the Winterman artwork and, um, you know, we kind of tracked it all down and, and also just started to try and catalog all the art that's in the studio. And, and, um, there's just so much stuff and it was, you know, it was, it was, it was tough to do. It was very emotional, but it was also, a kind of a, um, a cool kind of stroll down memory lane of all these things, you know, and, and you know how it is with, with our work. It's like, you can kind of remember, what you were doing, you know, at that moment when you drew that certain page or that certain panel or what job you were doing at a certain point in your life. And totally. And, uh, so it was, it was like going through all that art. It was like, uh, uh, remembering all the things and, you know, things that we were, is that why you look younger? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I have all this gray coming in now. Oh. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to adulthood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's sneak it yeah. in. So uh, yeah, although, but some of those pages like are really heavy. I mean, because there's so much uh, ink, and then white, and then ink again, and then white and ink again. Sometimes, I mean, like the one, the ones that were the most severe that way were a book he a book he did uh, called Static Shock. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the original Static stuff he did um, oh, back in the nineties? It was uh, a newer one that Dwayne McDuffie wrote that he drew that Melissa also colored and these ones, he would ship the art to our house. And, um, I think he was in Miami then because he lived in New York for a while before that to go to school. And the pages were so heavy. I mean, I, I would get the box and be like, man, there must be a ton of pages in here. And they were like four pages. It's just, the, <laughs> just the one. It's just, it's just caked on a uh, white out. And, uh, yeah. White like paint. you could take the page and bend it and it would just like, you know, oh, crap. God. Wow. Yeah. Please. That's yeah, it was just it was just um uh like a uh you know it was so much about trying to find that the perfect um drawing, the perfect composition, you know. Uh so yeah, if that meant chandelier kind of helping frame um the, the black hat on yeah. um, I, I can't even pronounce the uh, hero's name. What, what you what is it? Yeah it, Klopinov. Well, yeah, Kavanov. Kavanov. I mean, it's just beautiful. Even the guy, even the um, the officer's uh, black, you know, um, yeah. elbow shadowing in the the back of this guy. Everything goes to frame that center image. Yeah, yeah. it's just really smart. Hey, Tommy, how much would he draw right on the page? Did he do a lot of planning? Like, how did he do? How did he set that up? 
There are layouts um, usually on like eight and a half by 11 cut size paper. Mm -hmm. um, and um, a lot of it was um, some of it was super realized and some of it is really loose, you know, kind of depending on how much time or what was going on in real life, you know, but it was, it, but then he would sometimes blow those up and then light box them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes he just start right in on the page. It really honestly kind of depended. Um, some of the stuff was kind of um, uh, very, um, you know, especially when you needed reference of a certain thing, like that taxi cab or a stained glass window or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, you're going to draw Moscow. He's really going to draw Moscow. So so sometimes it was like, um, sometimes the reference was sort of dictate a little bit of like where you might put the camera or something, you know, or where you might, um, you know, so lots of times a, a layout, he had a, a general composition idea, but then the... Um, sometimes once then you find the reference and stuff, and then you kind of like start to put it all together and figure out, okay, this is what it really looks like. And that's a, that's the thing about when you research real places and stuff, all of a sudden new ideas start coming in and stuff. And, right. you know, so yeah, I mean, there's actually, there's a bunch of, I have some layouts here, um, but sorry, I've disappeared for a second. That's all right. We'll take a chance to take a look at uh, Dan started drawing. Let's see what Dan's got going on. I got a little. Um, well, Jeff, I uploaded a whole bunch of. Um, I know. I just want to. I. Um, but but it was funny. Of course, I wanted to do a tribute because I really liked the way he drew Dare, Daredevil and Batman, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do something like that. And um, <laughs> I started after after the fact. I uh, I started like that like that Daredevil. Yeah, and there's some Batman in there, and I'm like looking at him going, well, as much black as I'm putting on this page, it it doesn't hold a candle right. to, you know, the mastery that, that he did. It's just insane. So, um, Yeah, that yeah, double piece wanted, right there. I didn't even want to try that? to compete. Well, <laughs> right. that, yeah. I just, I just wanted to make it look in that, you know, in that wheelhouse, so to speak. Right. Um, look at that, Batman. And boy, did I find out. Yeah, look at that. I mean, even just yeah. lose yourself in that background. He's so well composed. It's not, nothing's overdone. All right. Um, All right, right. So the, the project JP was working on when he passed was a Batman Catwoman uh, story. Cool. Um, and these are all the layouts to it right here. What? Oh, wow. So yeah. what's going to happen with that? So, um, well, they put it they put it on hold for a bit. Um, DC was kind enough to ask Bernard and I if we wanted to finish the story. Um, and uh, at first, we really liked the idea. Um, but for me personally, like, I'm so busy, and if I'm gonna finish up something. I mean, JP and I work together a lot, but I don't know. I kind of feel like if I was going to either take some of these layouts and go to finish with them or, and, or continue the whole job, you know, mm -hmm. like, cause there's, he was only able to do a certain amount of it. Um, I'd really want to like work my butt off on it, you know, and like really mm -hmm. make it really great and really special. And I started to kind of mess around with some stuff and I just found that like, I didn't have it in me like emotionally. Uh, and, and also just like, you know, to get through one page was taking so much out of me that I didn't have it in my schedule or in my, I don't know, in my body. <laughs> so I just, I just, understandable. yeah, I just couldn't do it. It was just too much. So I, so Long story short, Bernard and I still may be taking some of his layouts to finish, um, just kind of teaming up on it, um, just to as a way to kind of work together one last time kind of thing. And then um, and then Mitch Gerads is going to go ahead, and I thought that Mitch would do a good job because he's a big JP fan and, and he's a good illustrator 
and I thought that um, he could do a good job with it. So he's going to go ahead and finish the do do the other pages that JP wasn't able to do. Oh yeah, um, so yeah, he's he's a good, he's a good fit. Yeah, yeah. and he could let and JP did covers for his book, um, Sheriff of Baghdad. Or oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so so it's going to be. Um, Oh, do we lose him? Uh, yeah. so Maybe just a little bit there. There was a cover. There was a cover for the Batman, Batgirl, no Catwoman thing released. Here's the layout for that page, for that cover. Oh wow! So, oh, wow. so that's more than a layout, obviously. Yeah. That's, yeah. Him, that's him going pretty far with the, uh, you know, with the drawing. So that's impressive. So then. I don't know for sure, but I, I think that he probably blew that up and light boxed it, you know, and then tightened up the drawing again. Right. And then went to ink. Wow. So, so some things would be, I don't know if some of the stuff I don't want to show for spoiler reasons. Sure. Of course. Yeah. But then some things, you know, are very loose and some things are kind of right in the middle. You know, like look at this head mm -hmm. here. You know, or it's just the rough underdrawing. Wow. So, but yeah, we have tons of that stuff from Winter Men, and some of it's going to make it in the art, the artist edition book. Mm -hmm. Right. So how's that? Um, how's that going to get? Like, how much? How big is that going to be? I know there's a link to it in the description box below. If anyone's interested in, in getting. Oh, it. cool! Thanks. Yeah. Um, um. Hey, I can't see you guys now. I know. Well. I just wanted. I wanted to focus on that art you were showing. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that, that is, we're, we decided to crowdfund it through a new company called Zoop. And mm -hmm. the reason was because, um, partly to self publish it, but, um, and then Scott Dunbeer wanted to work on it and Scott's done all of the artist edition books for IDW. Yeah. And so they're basically printed at original art size there. It's about 12 by 17 size. Uh -huh. um, so it's going to be the closest you can really get to holding the actual art. So you'll see all those things like Dan was talking about where you, know, you see like the white and you see, you know, all the little, uh, you can see tape, you know, like white tape on there. You can see, you know, it's, it's really cool. You can really see the process. Um, and then there's whole pages that he drew that decided to redraw and, you know, stuff oh, like really? that. So I, I yeah. love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really wild. Um, so sometimes it would be infuriating to me and Bernard, you know, but, but like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to but find yeah, the... but yeah, he's got um, yeah, all the spirit. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm just throwing up. I was looking for some more of the, the actual black and white stuff to show just how incredibly dense his pages are. Um, here's one. Yeah, he here's one. He had left to me. Uh, there's a book I did called Mother Panic a few years ago, and yeah, I remember that. Um, JP did a few issues, but there's a Mother Panic page. Wow, hang on, let's you zoom in on that. Light is catching some of the. Yeah, I, I remember buying that issue just uh, honestly just for for that. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I just. I was like, okay, damn. time to go to school here. Yeah, he was he was a craftsman, that's for damn sure. But yeah, that stuff was so on that we worked together a lot on stuff, and lots of times, um, I mean, especially when we were, you know, kids starting out, we'd always recommend each other for jobs, and you know, you help each other out, you know. Right. Dave, well, when you, you guys... a little bit something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dave. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Dave. What are you drawing right there? Yeah, what exactly are you drawing? Dude, I have no idea. I once again, it's like trying to follow up on somebody like you know JP, and and I wasn't going to try to even do anything that right. he would do. So I just I just wanted to freeform it. So I just started drawing weird All shit. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Dan, what do you got there? What do I got? I am doing a Batman, but. Uh... Excellent. I see you got some of the the JP grid work with the mm. the lines and the telephone pole stuff going. Yeah, I'm just uh, he did a great he did a great job of like, you know, it, it looks like it should be confusing, but it all works out. And 
Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if this works out. Well, that, you gotta have the white. You gotta have the white paint ready, Dan. Yeah. Is that what I? Have? That's what's probably missing right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, and then, because yeah, it doesn't always work out. So. Yeah. I think that's. Well, I'm not much of a planner, so. All right. Yeah. And Tom, yeah, that's gonna... one thing that because because I always use marker, like using marker on white paint after, it's not so good. <laughs> you know, it smears and and oh, it's yeah. times. Like I wish I used indie ink more right. um, to get some of those effects. So I kind of have to do it all, boom, right there, then and there, you know, unless I yeah. do things in Photoshop after. Yeah, I never use white at all, hardly. So You know, I, I grew up, uh, I, I, I love those, I, I love those Fino pages. Bill Ray used to show me some and, you know, it's the same thing like, like JP stuff It's it's, it's, also, it's on super thin paper, but it's caked right. over, and um, yeah, it's, it's amazing stuff. But but um, Scott Williams would say, "Look, the only way I use white out or white paint of any kind is for special effects, because I, I try my best not to make any mistakes." Mm -hmm. So I I kind of came from maybe maybe both schools a little bit, but I really appreciate like just you know the daring that comes with like, okay, I'm gonna take a chance here and and, and see what yeah, I, I usually if i if i make a mistake i just add more ink right yeah right, right. <laughs> throw a little more black in there yeah yeah i mean That's... nobody knows it's my art so you know i don't right. have a i don't have a penciler to make happy you know exactly yeah I I just is, like, we all know jorge zafino but no one knows scott williams so <laughs> yeah no one's ever heard of him yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Um, uh, you remember fax machines? Um, I, I remember yeah. <laughs> when, when I lived in LA and JP was in New York, and we would we would try and fax each other art. You know, like it was so bad. And I remember he didn't know this was probably ninety four or something, and he he didn't know who Jorge Zafino was. Mm. Wow. And I had that Punisher Kingdom Gone book was at the time my favorite one. And I Xeroxed a page from that. It's one where Punisher's coming down in a parachute, you know, like. Yeah. And <laughs> it looked like crap because it's a Xerox of a color page. And I, <laughs> right. and I put it in the fax machine and I send it to GP. Right. And then I visit him in New York and I see it hanging on the wall. And I'm like, man, that, that, you know, it doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was, that was uh, you know, like in your in our 20s you know sharing you know hey do you know this stuff check this out you know and all right. that you know so uh and nowadays yeah it's just like constant texting and everything yeah. back and, forth and sharing stuff it's great you know Dave, yeah, it was so Dave, much um, go ahead i was gonna say it's so much easier now we can just scan stuff take pictures of it i mean i i has i still have tons of old faxes of kevin nolan stuff and like just being amazed at what what the hell he was doing, but the copies are terrible. <laughs> yeah. Dave showed me um, Dave I can't remember the name of it, but he showed me a French book uh, recently when we were texting each other that had really cool cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, shoot, I, I, usually I have just got it today. Oh, I, I ordered yeah. it. I just got it today, so I ordered that think? and. Um, some books of uh, Colin Wilson, you know, Colin stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some this Western he's been doing called Nevada. So you got this book right here? Yep. Yep. That's it. La Fleur Vert. Yeah. This, this book. 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 Terrified so. me. Uh, Dave, that's that's coming along pretty good, man. All the, <laughs> all the knives in the face. Well, there is no face, so I'm oh, gonna call him knife face. Knife face, beautiful, beautiful. And Dan, you got going on there. What are you drawing, Jeff? I uh, was working on a carnage commission, but I'm gonna mostly just try and keep up with um, with moving the camera around to show the awesome stuff you guys are doing. Here's Tommy Lee's desk. Yeah, I and, put um, another camera. There so you I'm, go. I started a static drawing. 
You know, I haven't drawn anything analog in like a year. So do you mostly just work on computer? No, just this one project, this this thing I'm doing, Jupiter's Legacy. I'm doing, I'm drawing all that on the Cintiq. Wow. Uh, in Photoshop. And except for like some, my layouts and stuff, sometimes I keep a sketchbook and I'll draw, uh, you know, in there. But um, right. yeah, I just been working um, on the computer. So this is actually the first, uh, <laughs> oh boy. There you go. Let's see it. Let's make that. How's that first line feel? <laughs> oh, so how do you how do you like that? How do you like working on the um the the Cintiq exclusively? Um, I get sick of it. Um, but I get sick of everything. So, mm -hmm. like, I'll get sick of um, I'll get sick of working one way or the other after a while, you know. So, so right now I'm kind of like, oh, so tired of working on the computer, and then. And then after, you know, a year or whatever of drawing a, this book I did, Grendel, Kentucky, it was all, that was all, you know, analog ink on paper. So that one, you know, I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to doing a computer thing, you know, so it just mm -hmm. depends. If do I you ever get sick for too long, I get bored. Do you ever get sick of Dan? <laughs> just his questions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody seems to. Right. Uh, so what made you decide to go full uh, Cintiq on um, Jupiter's Legacy? Um, I had, I usually only work that way on um, like movie and animation stuff. And right. I was working as a production designer on a movie for Kerry Conran. He did this movie way back called Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. I love that. Uh, so, so, and then that got shut down because of COVID. And I was kind of in this mode and certain movies like the book of Eli and stuff. I'll, I will, I did on the Cintiq. Um, and you can do certain effects and, you know, do lighting stuff and really have, have a lot of like real time control over a color. And, but anyway, I ended up, um, um, I was doing a bit more comic stuff with that, like covers and stuff. And then, and then I was talking to Mark Miller about Jupiter's legacy and and I know he was he was trying to find a certain kind of look or approach to the thing and I wasn't even thinking I, I would do it or wanted to do it. Uh -huh. but then um, as we were talking about it, I was like, you know, I could do it this way. And you know, just so it kind of just happened and, and once he saw like some covers and things I was doing digitally, um, and you know, he he got excited about it and then I got excited about it. And so it all kind of, kind of worked out. One thing I like about your, your work is how much you incorporate different ink lines. Like some of them are in color. So it's probably much easier to, you know, do it that way. Um, yeah. I can always change it or change it back. You know, I mean, like right now I'm wishing I had the command Z button. <laughs> yeah. I, I do that sometimes. I'm like, Oh, if I make a mistake, no problem. And then I'll, then I'll go, wait a minute. If I make a mistake, yeah. I'm, I'm screwed. But I think that, uh, yeah, be, being able to kind of always like tweak the stuff, you know, and and um, uh, it's funny. I'm actually going to pull up an old JP drawing of static shock so I can figure out the, the costume. Now, oh, right on. Sometimes I like to tweak Dave. Well, you guys are drawn. I just wanted to uh, keep throwing up a crazy cool JP stuff. This is one yeah. of my favorite ones. Look at that madness oh yeah look at that wolf yeah that's another commission yeah uh -huh. <laughs> you, you see the white down at the bottom right yeah yes, you did that? that big chunk of it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that was me <laughs> yeah no i mean that that's what i mean like he you know he put all that white in there and and then uh, it dried like that you know i got it so awesome isn't it god it's yeah it's yeah. really cool to look at see him in, in, that, in that way and then coming in with is that it, wash to put that gray in there on the wolf and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, it reminds me that reminds me of Toth, like something Toth would do and, and yeah. you look at an original or you see it printed and it just there's something really special about that. Yeah. He did a Toth tribute piece uh that I oh, really yeah. love. I think we have it up there. Yeah, yeah right so. there. there. He even there. he even did the lettering up down there. Yeah. Um similar to Toth that dance on. Totally. It was a nice tribute. Well, every part of it is a tribute. Yeah, 
that's a great one. That composition. Jeff, I'd like to see you do a tribute for me one day. Someday. Uh, a Pan Ocean tribute? Yeah. I could do that. Which characters do Does you think I happen? should do? Yeah, I think we can work on that. Put that on the list. Yeah, definitely on the list. All right. Well, I'm going so here's first. Here's a shout out. So you know what you're going to do for me. <laughs> okay. Right, right. Here's a here's just a shot of JP. This is a studio. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a, just a cool? A few just a cool studio. Yeah. That's so what do you think JP made. knew? Hey Tommy, do you think JP knew how good he was? Or was he one of those guys that just never thought he was good and always was strive, striving to be better? Um, he was always striving to be better, but he knew he was good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, no, he was here. very, very picky, very, very, very opinionated. Um, and that's how you have to be if you wanna just, you know, keep you know, he's he was got very high standards for, you know, for 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 all of us. Yeah. <laughs> and at the same time, though, he was always able to be so polite and nice about everything with everyone. So I was nervous to talk to him. I never had a, any kind of relationship with him. I just see him at a convention and, and just be happy to s stop by and say hi. But I've never had a real conversation with the guy. So I was a little bit intimidated. Because he was just being nice with you, Dan. He was being, you know. Well, I didn't want to, yeah. <laughs> <I think that. laughs> exactly. He's like, yeah, yeah, I, mean, my face. yeah I mean, it's kind of like how you have to, uh, you know, you have to kind of rip on stuff and, you know, and everything because you're ripping on your own stuff, you know, trying to get better all the time. And that's what, you know, that's, I think that's the thing that over the past few months has been the hardest thing is, is, uh, not having that honesty um because we would always be honest with each other and you know kind of uh you know sort of you know send each other something and and you would knew if if jp liked it it it, it was working if he didn't he told he'd tell you you know right so i was it's great <laughs> to each other yeah so. we're, we're pretty good about that um yeah because that one's crazy keeping it real as it were Right. Sure. Is another commission, right? Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know who who has these, who owns these commissions, but they are gold, heavy, heavy gold. Yeah. Yeah, you probably undercharged too to the amount of work he was putting into it. Yeah. Um, sometimes, oh man, I can't believe how little he would charge on these things. Sometimes, but um. But it's also like when you're doing a commission, you have like this uh, freedom um, to kind of explore and, you know, kind of do do what you want. And I think that, you know, we both kind of like doing that. I mean, like when I wanted to do more, uh, get back to doing more, uh, you know, traditional painting, I was like, okay, I'm just going to start trying to do that in commissions now, you know, so that I can justify spending all the time on it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Dude, speaking of which, let me know uh, if you ever open up your commission list, man. I'd love to get a commission from you. Well, I I um I was thinking of I'm gonna do that as soon as I'm done with Jupiter. Yeah, Melissa is trying to, you know, my wife's trying to, you know, she really wants me to take some time off after uh after Jupiter. Um, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. How much longer well, did you have on that? Probably, well, there's 12 issues altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but I fell behind, especially uh, around the time when JP was getting bad. And and um, I kind of, uh, they brought in another person to do a couple issues. At first, I so I did one through four. And then five, I was already running late. So they got somebody else to do five and six. And I'm almost done with issue seven. So, so I'm doing seven, eight, and then, and then, you know, so I'm doing at least four more. So it's going to be another maybe, you know, six to eight months. Usually well, it know. takes me about, about two months to do a book. This is taking me longer because I'm putting way too much work into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You're putting way too much work. <laughs> yeah. I have to say this stuff looks amazing. Oh, I think thanks. I've seen, looks so good. 
Are you so you are inking it yourself? Well, that that's the one I'm doing all digital. So all oh, right, it's, it's basically like a painted book, you know, it's just it's on the computer. So even like today, I was doing a panel where I was actually drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Can I Christmas present? Let me have it. You want? I'm begging you. <laughs> You're begging me. <laughs> um, well, if you're begging, how can I turn that down? I mean, right, begging, you can't turn right? down begging. I yeah. love that one. He's literally begging. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, JP's figures were like they were so believable and they had such great motion in them. Yeah. Look at that one. Pow. Pow. I don't know if you guys have ever. Oh, that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that. No, that's another commission. I think. Yeah. Naturally. It's crazy. Of course. Of course. Can you imagine getting that in the mail? You're like, oh. <laughs> well, you know, um, Super school. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen this. Uh, he did a Mad Max drawing for that. That um, anthology book we a lot of us did pieces for. Oh, yeah. For your road, mm -hmm. road one. And. Um, so I'm I'm a really big Mad Max fan, and um, uh, so if you guys ever want to do a trade, that that's how you get me, okay? So a Mad Max, Mad Max drawing. All yeah. right, that's good to know. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> so so uh, so I loved the one that JP did, and um, and one day it just showed up in the mail. Oh. So yeah, it just it was amazing. Wow. Um, Excellent. But that's that's the kind of that's the kind of shit, man. That's the kind of, you know he would just you know send it to me and sign it to me and and then, and then we would do that for each other all the time. Oh, the is that the wire? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that and then the next one's from an actual story. Right. So much work went into every panel. Yeah. Well, that's Winterman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see how that one. Um, I'm not sure if this page had lettering on it or not. Some, most of them, John, were been lettered on the board, and then a lot of them, though, toward the, I know the last chapter, um, a lot of them mostly because of schedule and stuff, uh, and also JP ended up having to write most of it himself. Was lettered um, later and, and put in digitally. <clears throat> well, some of the pages in the in the uh, artist edition, you'll see where some is lettered on the board some some is not you'll see revisions some some of those there's has paste up on the lettering you know uh mm -hmm. where they you know actually stuck some of the lettering in there um so yeah it's it's so cool wow. to see mm -hmm. yeah can't wait to get mine yeah i miss lettering on the board right yeah and plus workman's such his style is so great i love his the way he places balloons and how much of an artistry there is in those just yeah, there's so much there's so much writing in in winterman it's such a there's a there's a lot going on to read and mm -hmm. the um the lettering becomes part of the art in that case absolutely well it's so very it was with um very with well simonson. Hmm? kind of like when he worked with simonson yeah right it he's still lettering all the ragnarok stuff yeah so cool That's coming out cool. You know, I think his costume is supposed to be white, but I messed it up, so I'm just adding more black. I'm taking a cue from Dave. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta learn those lessons. That's all a drink and draw is all about, helping each other. Yep. My face. All right. I'm really enjoying drawing this right now because I'm so tired of working on the computer. Right. It just feels different. Yeah, it's just a completely different um, experience. Also, it's, it's, it's a much more, I think, personal experience when you're drawing on paper and right up there with it, um, feeling it, feeling the paper. Um, mm -hmm, totally. Yeah, it's very different from working on the computer. Um, yeah, the... the uh, I should show you guys sometime. I, I had I had sold a, a show I created to uh, Google when they had uh -huh. this short-lived thing called YouTube uh, Red or YouTube Premium. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a sci-fi thing I was writing and directing. It was an animated thing. And JP, uh, of course, I brought in to do all the designs and stuff. And holy crap, man. Mm. It's just the best. But he still wouldn't work on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he had anything against it. I think he was just so wired well, to be able to, you know, do do it this well, way. You know? If but, he got something, if you have a system that works as well as his system worked, why, why break it? Why? Uh, right. If you, right. If you feel it, if you can feel the page and the ink, and you can do, and you can do something like this incredible Zorro piece, then I would never. <laughs> God. You, you know, it's interesting how um, the thing that flabbergasts me is how he could do those drawings and the, all that open stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah, it's beautiful. the way he could simplify it down to the bare minimum line. Um, it's just it's just so amazing. It's mind boggling. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When, when we first met, I was going to Art Center in uh, California in Pasadena, and he was going to School of Visual Arts in New York. And um we just started kind of like you know he, he had been doing stuff for a while at milestone and and i had just howard shaken and i were sharing a studio at the time and and he introduced me to dennis cowan and the long story short that's how jp and i met was we were both getting work at milestone and then um basically uh um the reason we hit it off was because we're into all these non-comics illustrators, you know? So when I think of that, like a lot of that line stuff, mm -hmm. you know, one of his teachers at school was Jack Potter. So he was into a lot of the, you know, sixties, you know, so you, know, you get Bernie Fuchs and Bob Peak and all those guys who would do a lot of line driven stuff, you know, Al Parker and, and, mm -hmm. uh, um, and that's why Howard and I got along so well. So it was, it was for me at the time, it was kind of rare to find, um, another comic book artist who liked that stuff as much as I did. It was, it was, uh, it was like, it was like, yes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. But I think that's the big, uh, part of, uh, one of the uniqueness why is, I think his work is so, um, unique and naturalistic. Yeah. No, yeah. You they call that they call you know it's the same thing with you tommy you're, you're like an, an artist artist like you know other artists look at it and go oh man i wish you know i, I could put, have some of those chops you mm. know he was also like he liked to always push himself um there was before he did the earth x he was he was had already said he would do earth x and then um alex ross was in charge of that project and and um, Alex really wanted JP to draw it, and, and JP at the time was just finishing a another thing called the Mailman. It was about a basketball player um, okay. named Carl Malone. I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah, and and he did this. It was like a sci-fi thing. Actually, I think maybe Brett wrote it. Brett, uh, who wrote who wrote Winterman. Was mm -hmm. it for for Motown? <sighs> maybe. If it was yeah, for Motown, so. Brett, Brett probably wrote it or, or edited the book because yeah yeah and I did one called the shortstop squad about about a, a bunch of baseball players who like you know could throw grenades really well because they knew how to throw baseballs you know <laughs> <laughs> they would fight like monsters and stuff it's it's really funny so they had mm -hmm. like Cal Ripken and Derek Jeter so it was really weird but um. But JP did this, did this story, of, and it was the most beautiful. Uh, I, his work made a huge leap in, in when he did this job. Well, it's always the jobs that you, you don't think you're going to learn from uh, mm -hmm. that somehow, and you, you might not even want to do necessarily. I, I find that that give you the you know give give you the most gains, I guess. Like you know. <laughs> In an athletic sense. Mm -hmm. Well, that was kind of like you and uh, the muscle fitness job, Dan. Yeah, I was. I was really into line decker, and um, yeah, that's how you kind of rescued me from that. <laughs> now, Dan, were you allowed to sign that stuff? Yeah, I, I, I was. Uh, <laughs> they, they gave me credit. They didn't remove it later. <laughs> Funny. 
Sir, I'm just trying to remove it later after the fact. You know me, I'm a shit starter. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dan, let me see. Check out these bats real fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Wow. I'm trying to make them look like they're a little bit in the distance, but I guess they're they must be huge because they're pretty large. I'm going to go back in and make some of them darker, mm. some of them lighter. Well, I can't make them lighter, so they'll, they'll remain this <laughs> this, <laughs> this opacity. Yeah, get the white, get the white out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to do it. You might, you might like this I, when, because I don't know if you use a lot of ink wash or anything, but I'll go in with the electric eraser sometimes, mm. and I can I can severely lighten um, ink wash with that. Mm. Oh, cool! It's kind of a neat little cheat because you know sometimes you you wish you you know you could you could uh, lighten something up, and it's kind of hard. Um, after that with. This is not a very forgiving medium. You draw, drawing live on. Uh... Well, no, I just meant like using ink in general is not, mm -hmm. you know, terribly forgiving in the sense that, you know, once once it's down, it's down, and you can't. It's it's. I couldn't figure out how to lighten this stuff up necessarily. Um, but but using electric eraser, you you can you can. If an area has if it's you know too too dark, you can go back in and kind of mess with it. All right, I'm supposed to ask Tommy about secret weapons. Oh man, who's bringing that up? Bernard. <laughs> well, I, mean, Bernard? I, would, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, Bernard wants to. You should have Bernard on here. Yeah. All right, Bernard. Don't start it. <laughs> Bernard's another guy I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for uh, Drink and Draw. Also, Ultimate Space Force, apparently, Bernard wants to know about. Ultimate Space Force. I don't even know what that is. Or Sports Force. Oh, he's talking about Shortstop Squad. Maybe. Yeah. The worst. Yeah, that was my my some of my first stuff was with with Valiant. That's what that's what he's talking about. Uh, right. Um. Uh. I. Yeah. That and then and then with uh with um. Yeah, milestone. How much work did you do for Milestone? How many issues do you think? I only did one book for them, oh. uh, and it was terrible. Um, and it was it was called "My Name Is Holocaust," uh -huh. and he was like a bad guy who was in like other, uh, you know, like other books and and um, you know, I found out they originally were going to have to do it with Jorge Zafino. Oh wow. wow. Yeah, and I was like, that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him, that hack? That's not right. Yeah. But yeah, I, I had um I had never worked with an inker before. I had no idea, you know, like I've mostly also I was at school and like painting and drawing like all very tonal kind of stuff. And it was it was it was a big learning experience. Mm -hmm. Here's what, when did uh when did JP work on the spirit? Was that were those just covers or pinups? Did he actually do a book? I think those are commissions. I think oh, okay. he he might have he might have done a cover or or maybe a pinup in a in a that look because that looks like it's a very story specific kind of thing. It did. You know, so I would say that's probably oh, yeah, right. something for for IDW. Yeah, look, it's like issue two. Yeah, I think that's something you did maybe for IDW, like maybe Scott doing beer. I think did some uh, spirit stuff. Gotcha. All right, like that seems like should be printed. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's the yeah. I don't know. This is you know maybe he did a story. That would be nice to see. Boy, it says so at the top. It says issue nine. So it's dedicated to Dan Pan Ocean. What? <laughs> right. Heck? That's crazy. Please mail this to Dan right away. Yeah. Property of Dan Pan Ocean, my dearest friend. Yeah. I like him so much more than Tommy. Right. That's what that's what he always said. That's what he was known for saying. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's so many pieces. I just want to keep staring. I want to keep showing. I want to show all the things that you've loaded, Dan, but I keep getting lost and just looking at 
Look at that one. There's some Batman pieces. Oh yeah, that one. That one's great. Uh, when yeah. I saw that, I'm like, oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the hands. I mean, he yeah, he did the, like, the best gloves. And stuff. I'm always trying to get gritty and 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 kind of take it to the next level, but uh, right, man, it's not as easy as as you think. You need more whiteout, Dan. Yeah, definitely more whiteout. Need more whiteout. That's yeah. the key, I guess. That's that's the trick. Yeah, that I mean, there's that's just it takes just so much balls to throw that much black and trust the drawing underneath to really. I think it's, I think it's not. Paint. I think it, it's it's the um, you really have to have mastered your craft you, yeah. to uh, have the confidence. Go, no, this is going to turn out exactly how I, I wanted to. Right. You know? Wow, the eye will go just where I want it to go. Well, yeah. it's about. It's about finding, like, you know, for JP, it's about finding the drawing. So, you know, that that wing that's in front of the, the top wing of the of the gargoyle, I think mm -hmm. is probably all white out. Hmm. Yeah, it looks so, like. So it's a lot of, like, you know, finding the drawing in there. You know, it's really, it's, it's kind of like sculpting. All right. So it's kind of uh what do you what do you are you throwing any more black there? Let's see. Yeah. I, oh here we go. No one, no one likes to show off, Tommy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like it, Tommy. It Look at that. Hang on a second. Wow. Great face. <laughs> Just kidding there. Wow. I think I'm gonna have to black out all this here wow that's fantastic looks better exactly Oof. how i would have done it well thanks dan that's definitely <laughs> that's the ticket <laughs> that's when you know you're doing it right yeah exactly wow you know the the other thing um uh about the one of the things i love about uh static shots uh that book particularly is um a fashion sense in there mm. um i think maybe maybe it helped that jp had a had a daughter at the time who was kind of the right age that was in the clothes and stuff mm -hmm. and um but man the stuff that the kids wore in there and the way they did their hair and i remember know, that it's amazing i mean yeah i remember that going okay you know that that really looks those are real sneakers those are real right. you know Everything about it had there was an authenticity to it that you know sometimes you know on a monthly book you, you have to go in a little autopilot and you know it yeah. is what it is. See, I miss but, the old days of uh, comic book artists basically always being ten to fifteen years behind fashion. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I used to love seeing all the bell bottoms in eighties comics uh, as a kid. <laughs> you know, because that's what all the kids are wearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. With all the sideburns and the big mustaches. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the things. Whenever you look at an old Gil Kane drawing, it's still the suits from the seventies. No matter mm -hmm. what, no matter who he's drawing or when he's drawing them. <laughs> well, once again, you know, it's like the difference between you know thinking it's just a comic. You know, what the hell do what the hell does it matter? I'm trying to make a paycheck versus. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to blow away all my competitors kind of mindset. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's just a certain kind of um, dedication. You know, it's just, you know, like, and so much of it was just, yeah, not, not, not wanting to, you know, it's like you'd rather do less work and have it all be amazing, you know, than, than, uh, you know, be more, prolific and and so much of the stuff so much of the stuff that you know um you know I, he could have done a lot more if he wasn't obviously wrestling with being sick and stuff like that and i think that there's a lot of uh I, that's kind of like what i mean when i was saying like there was when i look at the art i can see like what was going on in his life at the time and stuff and, and you know, he never talked about it. i never even knew uh he yeah. was ill well, and it was, you know, and those of us who did, like, you know, Bernard and I are having to, 
you know, not talk about it, you know, as people would wonder, how come he's not coming to shows that much? Or, you know, and then he'd be doing better and, and then he'd be doing not as well again. And it was, you know, it was, so we would just take as much as, as we could get. And, and then he just kind of, uh, neither, neither, neither one of us really liked conventions that much until um, me and him and Bernard and a bunch of us started doing them together. Um, mm. Me and him and Bernard and Sean Chen and Trevor Goring and we used to, you know, do the shows together. We put out sketchbooks and stuff. And, uh, the Boulevard. Yeah, I have those. Yeah, those were great books. Thanks. That was because we started that because um, they wouldn't let us into Artist Alley, uh, San Diego. They uh, what? What? Yeah, so we 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 were well, fine. We'll start our own artist alley. We'll start our own boulevard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> why why on earth would they? I missed this entirely. Why on earth would they not let you into Artist Alley? What? Oh, I got go. a few reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just politics. Oh, a yeah. bunch of narrative yeah. wells. You know, it was uh, Clyde Nee ne was in charge of it back then, and. Mm. I think we were supposed to donate to the right people and do the right kind of stuff. And I don't know. And none of us, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't like to, I didn't like to uh, be told what to do. So I, I had a bad attitude. Hmm, sounds like Jeff. Yeah. I, I would be glad to just pay for the space. This is back when you had to play favorites, you know, and they'd give you the space or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't stand that stuff personally. Yeah. So that's why we're like, just forget it, man. Yeah. It's not fun having to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I got my problems with San Diego. Well, yeah. and then they, and then there's the whole thing where you got to prove that you're a pro, you know, every, every <laughs> year. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then, you know, so you've got like Mobius sitting there having to fill out this paperwork, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, I got to show them again that I drew this thing called Blueberry that nobody heard of. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so. My biggest, my biggest beef was uh, it always felt like the same, the same comic book creators were always the featured guests. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, what, you know, what the hell, man? You know, half these people, I, I nobody even remembers who they are, but. You know, they, I don't know, they, they should have, for a show that big, they should have spread the wealth a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just me being a sourpuss, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I wanted to throw in, let's see, I wanted to, A, I wanted to show Dan this again. <laughs> just, <a hurt. laughs> just, just. Oh, it's such so, a crazy I'd be so happy if I could just oh such a crazy piece and then out of all the pieces that I was I've seen tonight this is still one of my favorites like that's, that's probably an older one too that's probably uh that's that's from that same one where he has the airplane coming in through the uh terminal terminal right. you see how it says yeah. terminal yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that one this yeah. yeah, hang on a second. Oh, it's the one where there's like a uh, like a, a plague or something on an airplane and everybody like ages really fast. Yeah, like, oh, look at those crappy colors on that. I know. Look at that. Here we go. Not that, but yeah. That looks great. But yeah, the that one you just went by, it was uh Yeah, what the heck, man? It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. That was uh works. he finally started to color his own work though. Um more uh in recent years i think partly because of you know just being um you know wanting more control you know right that's why i color my stuff i i just if then if it doesn't work out i only have one person to blame right yeah dave yeah dave, you yeah. Really blame dave for not advising you correctly yeah <laughs> <laughs> someone's got to be responsible Oh, you know what? That that's a lot like a cover he did for a, a Superman annual back in the mid '90s. Um, it was written by Louis Simonson, and that was the the first art that I had ever gotten from JP was from that story. Mm. Um, 
It's it's got Batman and Superman on it. And I remember uh the gloves were so real on Batman. I was like, how did you make those gloves so just feel so right? And he said because the heat was broken in his in his house and he was having to draw it with gloves <laughs> right on. on. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That is awesome. That is impressive. Well, here's the so the the Winterman compilation, right? Is that going to be all, so? It's going to be all the issues, all the issues. So it's 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 like two hundred and eighty pages, I think. Wow! So it's huge. Plus, then there's all the um, extras. Extras. So there's there's a bunch of and also so uh, uh, some of us have done uh, pinups to help try and get uh, more funding going and more uh, stuff people to the site. So. Even so Joe, he, it was Joe's idea to do this um, episode, and then he and Jeff were having a big falling out, so he decided not to do it. <laughs> oh, he's cool. tired of me, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. So there's so the the link is down below in the description box for people who want to get it, and there's going to be a ton of extra stuff in it. Um, and uh, it's such it's an amazing collection of work. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. and then it has wow. um it's gonna have there's a bunch of his like designs you know for like there are these guys the rocket men who had these suits that um you know these soviet soldiers that could fly and all this stuff and he would um uh you know design the heck out of it and um you know so yeah, there's sure. a lot of that in there. yeah those guys reaching. So the, his designs for those guys are all in there early concepts all he designed every single character you know, did like basically like um, almost like you would do for you know animation like turnarounds. You know, he would just wow. kind of realize everybody so that you know he had he had that reference to go from. I'm um, looking forward to that in particular. Yeah. Jeff is working on a book, and uh, they'll need a whole book just based on the um, character designs because he's been doing character design for so long in animation. Oh. I I think yeah. that uh, I went a little bit nuts, Tommy. I went a little bit. I went a little bit nuts with like, yeah, I designed all the. I I spent. It had to be a day and a half designing it. This one guy who drives like a, an oxen cart. So I just and had. I to, asked, and I asked Jeff. I go, well, how often does he show up? Once. Once. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the one, the one time. Yeah. yeah, but when he's when I when we do the animated feature, he's got a full turnaround and a background story. So yeah, so you're set. You don't have to worry. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, which yeah. they're going to hire somebody else to redesign your redesign or your uh, design. So you know, because it's animation. For that, Jeff. You, know. you got to follow the news, the Dave. You got to follow <laughs> the news. <laughs> yeah, I got to add more black here. Uh... Yeah. Uh, this much black, maybe. Well, That's I gotta crazy. say, Tommy. Tommy does a good. Yeah. Tommy does, definitely does a good job of. You never, you know, he's pretty fearless. Absolutely. Certainly, the color. Um. Very I fearless. Love that. I love that one. I look right. at some of that color stuff. I, I, I even, I even went as far. I, I bought a kid's book. You, I, you did. Oh. A while back. Was it a Star Wars one or? Yep. Ah. I was like, okay, look at this. This color is insane. I gotta pick this up. Which one was it? A which one was it? Was it an Anakin one? Yeah. Ah, I did a. I that one's a, that one's all painted. Or the, yeah, it's beautiful. Oh man, thanks. God, that was like a long time. A long ago. time ago. Yeah. Dave, did you finish yours? I am pretty much. Hey, finished. it's. I wouldn't call it finished because it's not very good. So let's see it. Brutal. Sometimes you just got to give up on it and just let it go. <laughs> <Nice> <laughs> face. It, was, it was a goofy idea to start with and it didn't get much better than that. So uh, I like that one. All right. And then Dan's craziness. Look at this. I'm almost done. Yeah. Not enough yeah. whiteout, Dan. Not enough whiteout. Yeah, it definitely. Oh, really out. You know, it has kind of like a almost like a Neil Adams vibe a little bit. Maybe because it's Batman. It's also because I, I didn't do the you know everybody loves Dark Knight and obviously so do I. But 
I, I do love that stretched out lanky, you know, Neil Adams, Jim Apparel, Batman. I was yeah. like, yeah. Cool. I always yeah, like I that like Batman that. too. I don't yeah. like that Batman like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and there's man. Can you can you lean that towards the camera, Tony, like so we can see? I'm trying to. I'm gonna try and leave his hand open in the foreground. Cool. Um, so this will be all black in here, and I'm gonna, you know, just get a belt, and then, um, yeah. So I don't know. It's getting there. Very cool. So yeah, I'm gonna try and leave this hand. I was gonna put a bunch of black on it, but we'll see how it goes. Damn. Man, I maybe I'll come in with some some uh, white like a uh, lightning effects or something. That's a ticket. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've I've been enjoying uh, hanging out with you guys and doing some drawing, and and it's nice nice to talk about JP. And for a while, like I I couldn't talk about him. I'd get too upset, you know. So yeah, but but now I'm kind of like uh, you know I, I'm feeling better about about stuff and handling it better so so now I'm, I'm glad i'm glad to be able to talk about them and stuff and well i'm and, glad we had you on thanks for yeah, taking the yeah. time and um great, yeah, great nice stories and insight we appreciate it i'm very yeah very grateful yeah. for you sharing your experiences oh, with sure. and and thanks for supporting the book too because um you know it's going to be cool and you know another, another reason we decided to self-publish it is because um, we're able to give all of the profits to JP's wife and daughter. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody involved is donating, you know, their time and stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of, you know, that's why it's just a bunch of us who, uh, you know, really, really, uh, you know, thought the world of JP. So yeah, it's going to be an awesome book. Now, did he, did he keep a lot of his original art, you know, from the books or does he have yeah. a lot? left over like well, even at, 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 if with winter men he'd never sold any of it so we have oh, all of it in the wow. studio so, well, so yeah it's, it's all it's all there and yeah and bernard had all the pages every single page plus designs everything in a suitcase and wow. i have photos of him dragging the suitcase through the airport and it was it was it was scary and it was i know it was um tough for um Christina, JP's wife, to to let all that leave the house, you know. Yeah. Sure. And um, but you know, uh, she trusts us and trusted Bernard to take care of it. And then he he drove it all down. You know, he took the train down to um, San Diego, met up with Don Beer, and uh, and um, you know, then they scanned all the stuff, and 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 now it's all back in Miami. Hmm. Wow. So yeah, pretty cool. Bernard Bernard didn't swipe any. <laughs> I know. Maybe. <laughs> well, I only, mean, if they ever, if she ever knows. decides to, if she ever decides to sell stuff, I'm definitely gonna try to be in line to buy some. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll let you know, but I don't think that's gonna happen. No. Wow. All right. There you go, Dave. There's there's your dreams dash. Yeah, you just have to see if Bernard actually <laughs> if he lost if he lost any pieces. Hey, yeah. I know where I know where he lives. So I know, well, Bernard knows a lot of magic tricks. He makes things disappear. You know. Yeah. yeah. You ever seen his card tricks, Dave? At drink and draw? No, no, I've never seen him do card tricks. I've seen him do card tricks at drink and draw for a little while. He took up magic. I think it was he would he would go to drink and draw and you know pick a card, any card, and then you'd pick one, and then lo and behold, he'd know what it is later. There he is. Oh, there's he Bernard right it. now. Yeah. He does it for the lady. <laughs> right. Yo, yeah, he, yeah he, he, he. I was like, I texted him, and he got home uh, today, or I guess in the middle of the night from the UK. They um, snuck him back in. Yeah. So, so, um, so we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to do do another one where uh, where where Bernard can come on too. Bernard, you would have had me at the first magic trick. Yeah, yeah. Dave would have been smitten. But you're just not his type, apparently, because he wasn't even wasting his talent on you. Well, I, I can't right really. Past, Dave. I can't really <laughs> argue that. I mean, I'm not my, I'm not my own type. So yeah. Well, yeah. that's you know, Bernard does the magic tricks for for the girls and Dan. And for Dan, 
I like, I like sparkly things. Jeff, you yeah. like sparkly mead. Surprised you didn't throw steamy art yet. You know, I uh, noticed I noticed that uh that Jeff likes mead. That's interesting. Yeah. I do. I love mead. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well then I, uh I'll have to get I'll have to give her the hookup in my in my local place. They do great stuff and they, they oh. send stuff. Um awesome. It's it's it's, it's it's weird how you were straining your poop for a while after drinking that stuff. Right? <laughs> I know gold is, I know gold is a lot, you know, right now, but damn, you know, listen, I got to make every dollar. I got to do what I can. Actually, I, I saw on a uh, Reddit, some guy said, if you strain all the gold out of Goldschlager, you can make just enough to buy another bottle of Goldschlager. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like a genius hack. It's like infinite gold slugger for the rest oh, of the God. Uh, That's awesome. Oh, God. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I got drunk really bad on gold slugger a billion years ago. Of course, it's a billion years ago because no adult drinks that stuff. And hopefully you threw up, which would have been an awesome sight to see. I think I did throw up. And 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 uh, and it was with JP. So we have lots of good drunk stories, too. So. The most expensive throw up ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, um, my yeah. very first trip to New York was uh, with JP and um, and the writer of Secret Weapons, the best book I've ever done, um, mm -hmm. uh, named Jesse Brudinka. And Jesse uh, got us so drunk that JP had to carry me uh, into a cab. And um, yeah, you know all those good old good old stories that you have with your yeah. buddies, you know. We've had to carry a few people in the cabs from drink and draw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had to occasionally pour someone into a ride home for sure. There's been a few times where the cabbies were like, "Nope, not taking him." Yeah, yeah. He's definitely going to throw up everywhere. We can't have that. Or attack, in, in Cyril's case. Mm. Yeah. Attack. Right. Jeez. He's yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Cyril likes to throw some stuff around. Matt says, just thought I'd let you guys know these shows are fantastic. Thank you, Matt. And this tribute is really great. Hearing the stories and experiences are just top notch to listen to. Thank you, Dan. Like, well, what is, <laughs> why does Dan get all the credit? I don't know. Yeah, did he add, I don't know. He, he added that in there. I just assumed that was, you know, sometimes you run out of, you can only put so many characters in a thing, Jeff. It's true. So. It's true. Well, I know that. So I, I'm watching Tommy draw and I want to see him finish this thing, but I know that we've taken up an yeah. hour of his night already. So and you got chorizo. I'll finish it and I'll send it to you guys. Awesome. awesome. Cool. Definitely post it up. I'm going to make this black up here. So, cool. so, so you need my address then, right? <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Right. And Tommy, yeah. Here's what we'll do for you. Hey, you <laughs> throw me at Mad Max. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I like I like where Tommy, Tommy we'll use we'll use our uh, drink and draw um, Twitter page and we'll give you some um, eyeballs on this thing because people need to start being familiar with your work and drink a drink and draw Twitter post can uh, kind of change your career. Sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's wonders for us. Yeah. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that's like you. Yeah. From the guy who did Seeker Weapons and My Name is Holocaust. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my All God. Right. Can you imagine making a book called My Name is Holocaust? I, it, you know, originally it was called Holocaust. Mm. Hmm. I'm like, wow, that's... What's this about? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a few ideas. Yeah, I mean, man. So they so they added the My Name is in there. Um, but, okay. you know, it was like... Um, Dennis Cowan and, and Dwayne McDuffie, man, they, they really like, you know, they, they took a chance on me and a lot of really young guys who didn't know what the heck they were doing. And, you know, it was, it was a good time. Dennis is also doing a pinup for, uh, for JP's uh, uh, book. Oh, excellent. Um, so we've got Dennis, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz, Walter Simonson, me, Bernard, um, Peach Momoko, uh, <laughs> Gosh, who else? Uh, Lee Weeks. Joe Casada. Hmm? You got Joe. Casada. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Joe's going to be able to. I mean, Joe's uh -oh. doing it. I hey, don't Jeff. know when he's going to get it done. Jeff, you're in some trouble. I just got a text from Joe. He said he was backstage and you didn't let him in. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, really? Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. I did not. 
I did Ooh. not see him. That's going to cost you. That's Oops. going to cost you tomorrow. Yeah, I apologize for that. I did not. Uh, the way uh, my computer um, works. Yeah, you're not working tomorrow, you. right? Say what? be you right now. You're no, not working for Marvel, are you? No, not at the moment. I'm in big trouble. Right, that was safe. just, I apologize. Uh, you, my my you attention. Been that would have been it. Yeah. No, my <laughs> attention was elsewhere. Um, all right, guys. Well, let's. Uh, Let's wrap it up. Let's let's uh, take one last look at Tommy's thing before we before we go. Right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this was yeah, thank uh, you, Tommy. This was inspired by JP and um, his awesome book. So yeah, Static Shock is a great one to check out. And then obviously the Winterman. And thanks for pimping the book for us, guys. Appreciate it. Of course. Oh yeah, I can't wait to get it. All right. All right, gang. Joe, I apologize. I didn't see you back there. Um, Dave, Dan, good to see you guys. Really? Yeah, for the most part. Oh. Let's go see Dave. <laughs> <laughs> There's JP. <laughs> All right, Tommy. All right, everybody. Cheers, Tommy. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everyone. That was great. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you.